Where's the stock market headed? Up, down, or just plain sideways? Where are the best opportunities right now? Dave cuts through the fluff in a no-nonsense manner. Random Thoughts with Dave Landry Podcast. Here's your host, Dave Landry. This is your Random Thoughts Podcast for Friday, June 24, 2016. Why I teach trading and how that benefits both me and you. I teach trading for both obvious reasons and not so obvious ones. You too could benefit from this, especially from the not so obvious reasons. Let's explore this further. I teach trading because I like teaching. Years ago, a friend nicknamed me Mr. Information. He actually had a shirt made for me that said just that, along with a hat that read, Ask Me. Although he liked to poke fun, I was the first he'd call any time he needed information. See this week's Dave Landers The Weekend Chart for an amusing antidote here. This, obviously, was long before the internet. I teach trading because I make money teaching trading. Let me be frank. Although I do help a lot of people that have never spent a dime, and may never spend a dime, I'm not completely altruistic. I do make money teaching. And getting to see the world in the process doesn't suck either. The money for how to make money versus keeping it for yourself argument comes to mind. If you had a goose that laid golden eggs, why would you sell it? And I fully agree. If it were easy to, and I quote, turn $5,000 into $500,000, unquote, then that's all I'd do, rinse and repeat. It's not. Like in life, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So what am I selling? I'm selling hard work and common sense. I'm selling something that makes sense conceptually. I'm selling seeking to identify emerging or existing trends and figuring out a way to get on board them. Then, once in, Mitigating losses if I'm flat out wrong, taking partial profits in case I'm only partially right, and hopefully, I know, hope, staying with trends that persist for a long, long time. This is something that has worked for hundreds of years, even thousands, if you look at old world commodities. And since catching a trend is the only way to profit from a trade, finding and getting aboard trends makes a lot of sense. I teach trading because I learn while I teach. It's been said that if you want to get better at something, you teach it. I fully agree. The constant questioning makes me think and rethink about my answers. I want to make sure that anything I say is conceptually correct. I certainly don't want to look like an idiot, although I'm okay being known as a trend-following moron. Many are surprised when they discover that I actually answer all my own emails. Admittedly, sometimes eventually. Last time I counted, which is back in 2010 while I was working on the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks, I had replied to over 30,000 emails. It's probably well over 100,000 now, but at the least, it's safe to say that it's a bunch. This helps me to cement the process and reduce it down to its essence. Being on stage in front of a big screen, I've seen things that I didn't notice as much on my small screens. For instance, seeing a four-foot short-term persistent move made me realize that even short-term persistency of trend can be quite powerful. This is especially true during emerging trends or base breakouts. As another example, it has reaffirmed the power of moving average daylight. Seeing the price bar six feet above the moving average is quite an eye-opener. I teach because it makes me work harder. Trust me, on a crappy day, if I didn't have clients depending on me, more than likely, I'd walk away from my screens and have a few beers. Instead, I put my nose to the grindstone to make sense of everything. Not every day, but often, I see that it wasn't nearly as bad as I initially thought and felt. Many times, it's just a normal ebb and flow. And sometimes, I ended up scratching out or even slightly in the black. Further, by doing the work because others are depending upon me, I work hard to make sure that I leave no stone unturned. I practice deliberate practice. Google it. I must exhaust all possibilities because people are watching. I must then weigh that against no choice, doing nothing. Which, by the way, is always a choice that must strongly be considered before putting capital into harm's way. Primum non cherry to you or me comes to mind. First, do no harm. Surprisingly, I occasionally find great opportunities when I don't really feel like doing the work due to lackluster conditions, but have to because of you. For instance, back in February when the markets were pretty crappy, and quite frankly, they really haven't improved since, a client emailed me to tell me that he was taking a break from my core trading service because, quote, he could not see any setups for the foreseeable future, unquote. And quite frankly, neither could I. Yet, literally, that same day, I found two setups. Both went on to hit the initial profit target, roughly 34%. And we're still in a longer-term trend-following mode, and one of them, up nearly 70%. Well, at least before today's open. LOL. 
I know people wonder what the world would be like without hypothetical questions, but I do have to wonder if I would have still done a thorough analysis, given the conditions, if it were just for me. Would I have found two beers instead of these two trades? I teach because you make me want to be a better me. I teach because it forces me to practice what I teach and preach. In good conscience, I can't tell you not to fight trends and then go out and pick tops and bottoms. I can't tell you to honor your stops and then ride stocks into bankruptcy. I can't tell you to just follow the plan and then just wing it. It's a constant voice in my head telling me what I have to do. BTW. It's a good thing I work alone because I bet the voices in my head would bother my coworkers. I once had a bunch of positions on that were doing exceptionally well. In fact, things were going so well that I actually found myself somewhat frozen as I stared at my screens. Right about that time, my wife popped, in, popped her head into my office. I informed her the good news, but then said that I'm not exactly sure what to do. She quickly quipped, quote, what would Dave Landry do, unquote. She then turned on her heels and walked away. I growled a bit and then thought, well, what would Dave Landry do? Dave Landry promptly began taking partial profits and trailing stops higher. I teach trading for ego purposes. There's certainly some feeling of Maslow's hierarchy of needs going on. Don't worry, I'm not going to go all freshman psychology on you. A few things, though. Helping others realize their goals and dreams is rewarding. If I can make others successful, then I become more successful in the process. This helps my ascent up Maslow's ladder. Is there a lesson for me in all this? Absolutely. Deliberate practice as if someone is depending on you will make you better, much better. Don't just look at the charts. Look at the charts and ask yourself, could I have caught this move? Should I have? While at the same time realizing that you can't kiss all the women and no methods work all of the time. Make sure that you exhaust all possibilities. If you do find potential opportunities, make sure that you study overall conditions so that you have a little tailwind to begin with. And if you don't, make sure that you have the mother of all setups. If not, it's okay to pass. Provided that you worked hard, you could walk away with a good feeling that you've done the right thing and then have those two beers. Holding yourself accountable, even if it's only yourself, will make you a better trader. It'll force you to cement your methodology. And here comes the cliche, plan your trade and trade your plan. For you married guys, if you're brave enough, show your wives what you're doing. I read a study, and I'm thinking it's probably Montier, I'll give him credit, where men who got their wives involved in a trade became much more successful. Unfortunately, just the opposite happened when the wives got their husbands involved in their trading. As I've written before, ego trumps emotion when it comes to the pitfalls of trading. If you do decide that your marriage can't survive a trading partnership, then work to become better, even if no one is watching. Or find a motivated partner and play off each other's strengths and help each other with their weaknesses. And now, something completely different, hence the column name, Random Thoughts. From a teaching standpoint, I honestly don't think I have any competition in this business. I'm not saying that to be flippant. Most aren't out there teaching you to be prudent, sitting on your hands where there's nothing to do, and working hard to fix you. Sure, there are a few. And some of my clients are their clients too. The reason this comes to mind is yesterday while cleaning out my inbox, I clicked on a video blog post from a website software company that said that you should check out your competition from a website design standpoint. So I did. My ADD kicked in as soon as I got to a popular trader's website. I began reading the blogs versus checking out the site. Long story endless, I couldn't help read a post there from someone who was mentally challenged. And that's really an insult to the mentally challenged. He was suggesting playing the Brexit by buying calls and selling puts to finance the trade. Unbelievable. Let me get this straight. Let's put it a trade with unlimited risk and a binary outcome, 50-50 at best. I feel for the poor bastards that took that bait. Anyway, that's Exhibit A. I have no competition to speak of. I do speak of those who I respect quite often, and they speak of me too, for which I am humbled. So if anything, my relationship with a few realists out there is collegial, not competitive. To the markets. Earlier this week exemplifies why you should not get too caught up in the news. A poll showing that Britain would not exit from the EU turned out to be as useful as tits on a boar hog. I think the market is vastly overreacting. In fact, so far, it's been a really nice ogre. That's an opening gap reversal. Watch yesterday's Dave Landry's The Week of Charts for a lesson here. And if we continue to slide, it was into cards anyway. You can't blame it on Brexit. This is why I've been so cautious while the market has been treading water for over a year. So what do we do? Don't stress over the news. Trust me, there will be something new to worry about tomorrow. Do honor your stops and be selective on new positions. 
Now you know why I've been cautious for so long. If conditions are not conducive, then sit on your hands. If you've been following along, then you'll know that we have been super selective, almost to a point of boredom. I would never feel schadenfreude in this business, but with only a small part of the portfolio at risk, it is nice to be able to keep my head while everyone else is losing theirs. I'm not bragging. There's a teachable moment. Be prudent and selective, especially as a trend follower, when there is no trend to follow. May the trend be with you. Dave Landry. Want to learn more about trading? Visit DaveLandry.com for free reports, articles, videos, and live webinars. Got a question on trading? Email Dave at Dave at DaveLandry.com.